Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Lomi. Lomi is a countertop electric composter that allows you to take your food scraps and food waste and transform it into nutrient rich plant food in four hours. We all hate wasting food and now nothing ever gets wasted with Lomi. And what's so cool is you're left with this beautiful nutrient rich Lomi earth which you can add to your plants, sprinkle on your lawn, add to your garden rather than sending it to the landfill. Now, I have been an avid composter for years and years and years and years and years, and I understand that there are limitations to composting. Perhaps you don't have a yard, perhaps you're renting, but Lomi makes it really simple and easy, especially if you live in a small place, to create plant food from things that you would normally throw away in the trash. Plant clippings, food scraps, leftovers even, stuff that's been languishing in the back of your fridge, you can add to your Lomi. You can even add bits of meat, which ordinarily doesn't go into a compost pile because it attracts little pests and varmints, but you don't have to worry about that in your Lomi. And now Lomi has a new app that allows me to track my environmental impact and earn points with every cycle for freebies from Lomi and other great brands. Whether you wanna start making a positive environmental impact or just grow a beautiful garden, Lomi is perfect for you. So if you'd like to try it for yourself, head over to lomi.com slash Emmy and use code Emmy to receive $50 off. That's $50 off at lomi.com slash Emmy. Big thanks to Lomi for sponsoring this video and for allowing me to make better videos for all of you. So today we're going to be making a chicken recipe that comes from the 18th century. I first learned about this from Townsend. I will put a link down below to the original video, but I was so intrigued by it because we were going to be cooking an entire chicken just in butter. It sounds excessive and simple and delicious, but why have I never heard of this before? There must be some reason. It seems pretty decadent, but I want to try it. And most importantly, I want to taste it. So this recipe was originally published in The English Art of Cookery by Richard Briggs in 1785, and it's called Fowl or Chicken the Dutch Way. Super simple, super easy, but we're gonna need lots of butter. And specifically, we need clarified butter. Now this is butter that has its milk solids removed. Milk solids are what causes butter to burn very easily and we don't want it to burn so we have to remove that and it's super easy all we have to do is melt the butter and then pour off the bright yellow clear portion and leave the white solids behind and i've got a little little tiny cornish game hen which i just recently learned that a cornish game hen sounds like a game hen but it's actually just a very young chicken it's a cornish rock hen, which is a double misnomer because this could also be a cockerel or a young male chicken. It doesn't have to be a hen, a female chicken. It is small because it is a young chicken. And the reason why I wanted this small size is because we're gonna be using a lot of butter and this needs to be completely submerged in butter. So I thought the smaller size would be better for that and also it would fit in my vessel better. So using the powers of displacement, I use some water and when this little chicken was wrapped, I placed it in here and I saw that it displaced about four cups of water. So we're gonna need about four cups of clarified butter. So let's, let's do it this way. Put in lots and lots of butter. Slowly allow our butter to melt. Now this whole process of cooking the chicken in a large amount of fat has me thinking it's like confit. Have you heard of duck confit or garlic confit, which was kind of going crazy earlier this year, but it's a method of preservation ultimately. So we can actually cook this chicken and preserve it in this butter when we're finished. It's kind of amazing. So duck would be often preserved this way. If you've heard of duck confit, you take duck legs and you cook it very slowly at a low temperature around 200 degrees Fahrenheit in duck fat. In this case, we're using butter. Cook it slowly for about an hour to two hours until the duck, or in this case, the chicken is completely cooked. And then it is allowed 
to solidify and the fat prevents any air or bacteria from getting in there. So you can preserve the chicken or the duck for about one month in a cool environment. Isn't that amazing? So this is essentially what we're doing. We're making chicken confit in butter. Love it. I've never done confit before. I've never melted this much of butter to cook in before. So I love these new things. So we're going to season the chicken with some mace, clove, salt, and pepper. Some of you might not be familiar with mace, but it's a beautiful thing. It's related to nutmeg. So here I have a whole nutmeg. You might have grated fresh nutmeg before, but around a nutmeg is this little membrane. There's the nutmeg, but this part is called the mace. Isn't that beautiful? So this recipe calls for four blades of mace, and that's a blade. Isn't that marvelous? That's what a whole clove looks like. I've found grinding up clove finally challenging unless you have an electric grinder. So I'm opting for ground cloves. And now we're going to add some salt, about a teaspoon of salt and lots of freshly ground pepper. I've got flat leaf parsley that I've grown in my garden and it says to use a handful of that. And now we're going to season the bird on the outside. I am also going to put it under the skin. This did not say anything about marinating. So marinating, of course, is allowing the spices and flavors that you're adding to your meat or your dish to sit together for a while so that the flavors can be absorbed. But this did not call for that. So I'm going to err on the side of over seasoning a bit so we can get some flavor into the chicken. Now, since we're cooking this at a relatively low temperature, I'm not imagining this is going to get much color. It's not going to be like a fried chicken, which has a much higher cooking temperature, about 325 to 425. And this is going to be more around 200. Add the parsley to the cavity of the bird. Wash my hands very well. I'm going to truss the bird. And for me, that just means tying it up, tying the legs up. And I'm going to just turn the wings around like this to keep them kind of tucked in. Now we're going to clarify our butter. We've got all this foam and we want to scrape that into a bowl. Look at that lovely golden color. So now we're going to pour the clarified butter into here. And you can see the milk solids down below. Can you see that? I just want to pour this into here so you can see where the milk solids. That's the part that likes to burn. Place the chicken in the pot. Now we're going to add all that beautiful butter right on top. Look at that gorgeous chicken submerged in butter. <laughs> So we're going to get this up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit and then cook it for about an hour or until the internal temperature of the chicken, the thigh meat in particular, registers 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we know it is cooked and then we will give this a taste. I cannot wait. Chicken completely cooked in butter, submerged in butter. <laughs> See you in a little bit. Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back and my chicken is up to temperature. I just took the internal temperature and it registers above 165 degrees. That means it is done. So let's see what it looks like. But essentially what we're doing here is poaching, but poaching in butter rather than in broth or water. But oftentimes when you are making a stock, they say to skim it. And I think that's more for aesthetic purposes, so you have a clear broth, but we have clear butter. And this butter can be reused. It's butter and chicken fat. Chicken fat is a great medium to cook with as well. Schmaltz, lovely. This is gonna be infused with that lovely flavor, and we can cook with it as well. I raise the chicken out. Pour this butter right on top of it. Alrighty, my lovelies, let's finally give our chicken cooked in butter a taste. Now, my favorite part of 
Chicken is the dark meat, especially love the thighs. So here we go, the chicken breast as well. Oh my gosh, that looks so tender. Look at that. I'm gonna put a little butter on top. Let's give this a taste. Eat the Mmm. Mm. Mmm. Is that ever good? All right, let's try a bit without pouring butter on it. Lovely, succulent, juicy, nicely seasoned. I'm so glad that I put the salt underneath the skin of the bird, because I don't think the salt would have penetrated the skin because we didn't really give this any marination time at all. Delectable. I'm glad I took the temperature of the chicken because I pulled it a good half an hour earlier than what was directed in the recipe. I definitely recommend taking the temperature with a thermometer if you have one to see when it reaches 165 degrees because then you can avoid overcooking the chicken. Mmm, and this is delectable. Juicy, fantastic. Let's try the little drumstick. Here we go. Mmm, mm-hmm. Again, glad I put the salt underneath the skin and I use salted butter, so it's very well seasoned, but not overly salty. I can taste the clove and the mace in there, but it's pretty subtle, and I like that because both of those spices can be very overpowering and strong. It just gives it a little kiss of spice, not heat, but flavor, and not overly rich. I was thinking because this was cooked in butter and served with butter, it would be decadent, and it's not. I'm gonna try some thigh meat next. Mmm, mm-hmm. Favorite part, so juicy, tender, and full of flavor, and not at all over the top, at all. I thought this would be excessive or heavy. None of those things, just a lovely, well-cooked chicken. It's very similar to a poached chicken. This is gonna be a little bit weird, but I'm gonna try the butter just by itself. Mmm, salty, it tastes like Popcorn butter, but not artificial. You know what I mean? You have that lovely buttery flavor and richness without being like hit over the head with it. You know, it doesn't have that fake flavor. It's fantastic. This will not go to waste. I'm going to save this, put it in a jar and use it to fry eggs in. Any time I would use some oil, I would use this lovely clarified butter. Alrighty, my lovelies, there you have it. An 18th century recipe for cooking a whole chicken in butter. Absolutely delicious. Thanks so much for watching and big thanks to Lomi for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try Lomi for yourself, head over to lomi.com slash emmy and use code emmy to receive $50 off. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. I love hearing from you. Love hearing your suggestions. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. <laughs>